Hi everyone, I'm Joe MVR, also known as Fitbrit, in the Dirt Rally 2 leaderboards. I'm part of the Global Rally Fans or GRF team and also a new administrator in the very popular Rally Adria Dirt Rally Club. So today I'm bringing you my second interview in a series of interviews with some of the top drivers and some of the most interesting event organizers in the world of Dirt Rally 2. So today I'm joined by a super fast driver who holds multiple world records in the game. He's also an all-round, down-to-earth and decent bloke, typecast Wookiee from one of the top teams in the world, Exodus Racing or EXR. So, Mr. Wookiee, um, really pleased to have you here. Uh, would you please tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, like where you're from, etc., and especially how I should refer to you during the interview? Uh, Mr. Wookie is my father. You can call me Ian. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, my, name, uh, my name is Ian. I'm from uh, a town called Coloma in California, which Wikipedia lists as a ghost town, so it's, it's, it's not exactly a thriving metropolis. <laughs> and 40 years old, I've got two young kids, and um, yeah, that, 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 that's a basic outline of me. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I... Yeah, I don't want to make you feel old, but I, I, it's nice to have uh, some of the people that I consider to be a little bit older than the uh, uh, the Zoomers in the game. Yeah, exactly. so, yeah. Okay, so you've um, mentioned in our chats a little bit about having actual real-world racing or rally experience. Can you recount a little bit of that to us, please? Uh, not rally experience, I wish, um, but I grew uh, up racing carts. Um, and I had a, a, a brief summer where I raced a Datsun 510 in a, uh, in a, a vintage series here. And, um, and then I just have a lot of autocross experience. Okay. Um, what, on what's... top of that. So it's mostly all tarmac, unfortunately. Right. And I guess that's all rear wheel drive stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. It all by rear wheel drive. Okay, cool. So how did you get into dirt rally two? Um, well, when I found out the Codemasters was releasing a rally game that wasn't uh, tailor <laughs> tailored for the, an American audience, which is really the death knell of any media, um, <laughs> you know, I, I I jumped all over it. And so, because I, I I remember playing the old Colin McRae uh, Colin McRae rally games, uh, maybe the 2005 one, where it would be like stage rallies, and then it'd be like. Okay, well, now do you want to race a semi truck up Pikes Peak and be like, oh, no, I, I don't want to do that. That's <laughs> exactly right. what I don't want. Right. Um, you know, so there's no disinterested bro giving me inane sound bites over the top of my racing and when I'm done. So uh, when it was a pure, found out that they were going to release a pure rally game, I was just all over it. So were, were you, uh, did you participate in Dirt Rally itself um, before uh, Dirt Rally 2? D yes, I did. I, I played I played Dirt Rally One, but not online at all. I, I actually didn't have um, internet at the time. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, yeah, I loved Dirt Rally. I think I joined up on day one because they released it as a surprise, and oh. uh, and they were really like you know, I was part of the whole community there with Paul, who was uh, the producer of the game and also the voice of the co-driver. He actually. In producing Dirt Rally, he actually trained to be a co-driver and did his first rallies and said how he was you know, feeling really motion sick to start with and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Uh -huh. that's um, awesome. So uh, do you play any other racing games currently or in the nope. past? Nope. Nope, not at all. I, have, I mean, really, I just like racing on dirt um, because I've had you know my limited experience on tarmac. Uh, tarmac games just don't quite make sense to me because I'm missing so many uh, stimuli. I'm, there's, I'm just right. missing certain things that that just don't quite add up. So because I've never raced on dirt, I, I bet if I if I had raced on dirt and I started playing uh, dirt rally, it wouldn't make sense to me then. But as a result, tarmac doesn't make sense to me in games now. Um, right, I hear you. I hear. I, I mean, I've heard from actual rally drivers that the feel in dirt rally two is actually pretty good. Um, once you know they've tuned their cars and stuff, it's it's actually a pretty good feeling. But um, yeah, so actually, listen, let's, let's move away from the virtual realm for a second. What is it that you do in the real world? Um, I make uh, metallurgical specimens for engineering students for for schools and certain engineering firms. So really, it's just a bunch of stuff that they break, made out of all different types of materials. 
um, all machined to very uh, specific ASTM standards. They're just weird little shapes. It's it's extremely boring. It sounds really cool when I tell people, you know, <laughs> it sounds pretty um, pretty fancy pantsy, but it, ultimately it's a it's a it's a fairly boring job. But um, I get to do it by myself, and yeah. it's stable, and um, you know I can pick my own hours, and um, so yeah. it's pretty fantastic in that sense. That's, that's... But I used to actually be a, a game developer. I used to be a game artist before I took over this business. So um, it was oh, quite, wow. the, quite the leap, yeah, going from, from game development to suddenly pretending to be a machinist was, was pretty wild. But I, I figured it out, at least enough to fool the customers. And that's, I guess that's, that's all you really cool. need. So did you work on anything before that we might have heard of? Oh, no games that I mean we're we're talking like stuff for like the PSP, okay. the 360. Uh, I worked on America's Army that the, oh, the yes. game that was put out by our military. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Like a bunch of stuff, yeah, a bunch of stuff that was because my very first game experience was doing um, basically scratch voiceover for Psychonauts. Okay, and so I got to hang out with Tim Schafer and in, and in, in that whole crew. And that sort of set like this impossible high watermark after that, where I thought I was going to be able to work on like, you know, the most amazing creative games. And uh, yeah, reality didn't quite work out that way. Okay. So um, I got burnt out pretty quickly in that industry as, as that industry, you know, it's typically what it does to people. They, they, they burn you out. Yeah. They Um, try to squeeze. And right about that time (laughs) is when I came up and, and took over this business. Fantastic. So do you like being your own boss? Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's lonely. I, I get sick of my own company, but um, you know it, it's not like I, like I've said before, I have my own. I have another little driving rig here at work. Okay. And so um, you know I've got CNC machines that I can set up a cycle to run maybe 45 minutes on, and then rather than sit around and twiddle my thumbs, I can play a little bit of dirt and just you know listen, yeah. keep it, keep one eye ear out in case the machine crashes, which is always a possibility with me running them. <laughs> um, but but. Uh, yeah, it's it's fun. It's it's great. It's oh, that's that's you know, cool. It, it's I don't I, I don't necessarily like the job, but I do <laughs> anything to keep it. It's one of those kind of things. <laughs> okay, yeah, because I remember once you saying, "Oh yeah, I I was playing it at work," and I was thinking, "Hey, dude, what kind of work do you do that you're allowed to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to, to to race?" But I know exactly how you feel because uh, yeah, I also have a very small business that I run myself. And in fact, I even tried to get you to do some stuff for me <laughs> at yeah, first yeah, I think as well <laughs> I just don't have the skills or the machinery all right no problem so um like uh, my guest from last time Ed Rosa you in uh, took part in the Adria Rally Championship season 2 and that was a grueling 12 week competition in the 2000 cc class and it's where we met like I met uh, Ed there as well uh the competition as you recall, we'll have had both an individual and a team contest, and you came third in the competition behind the winner, Crazy Nevada, and uh, uh, from uh, that's from Team Estonia, Crazy Nevada, I think, and Speed Sensei also from your team, EXR. Um, I came in fourth behind you guys, and I don't like to talk about that too much because it's <laughs> so painful, such a painful oh, memory. I know, I know. Um, but you know, and I was always chasing you and very rarely surpassed you. I know that you, I mean, you won a couple of events, I think Finland and Argentina. And the best that I did was come second a couple of times and third once, but usually I was fourth. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about your experience in that whole championship uh, and, you know, what you thought of uh, everything there? I, I really liked, uh, well, I, I honestly, I, I don't uh, drive all-wheel drive cars, or at least the more modern all-wheel drive cars, in long championships like that. Right. So I was actually I was pretty happy with my finish. I mean, I was I, honestly, if I'm coming in 30 seconds behind Crazy Nevada and I'm still in third, like I'm pretty happy. You know, like that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good for me. Um, you know, maybe the I was I was third, but I was maybe first of the humans. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I I definitely enjoyed that one. That was a good one. Um, Are you going to be in uh, season three? Um, I actually, I'm I'm not in. When, when does it, I actually don't even know when it starts. That's oh, how out of the loop I am. I think it's like January twenty second or something like that. Oh, okay. No, I'll have to sign up for that one. I'm I'm slowly limiting the amount of clubs that I'm in right now. Just um, 
you know, as my playing time, the, the amount of time I have to actually play, uh, so I don't feel too obligated to. So it doesn't become work, in other words. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, Sorry, honey, I got to go finish these rallies, or else, you know. Um, but yeah. but I like I like the Adria one a lot, so I'll 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 have to to join that one. Fantastic! Um, I'm looking forward to to racing against you again. Yeah, it should be fun. <laughs> it's R five though, so I'll warn you about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's it's all right. I'm I'm starting to starting to warm to them a little bit. It's not my preferred way of racing, but um, but uh. Or, yeah, uh, start, starting to warm to them. So, were you racing lots of clubs at the same time as doing Adria, or uh, like how many are you racing now? At at the time of Adria, I think I was in like eight or nine. Whoa. Um, okay. And a lot of them were were rear wheel drive type stuff. Um, and then there, you know, there's the JRC ones, which is they typically got about three rallies going on at any given time. Um, but yeah, I kind of went a little crazy and, and joined a bunch of them. Um, and it it. it it really became like a high workload type thing. Um, um, and now I think I'm down to three clubs um, and, you know, four when I, when I uh, join Adria and Fantastic. that's, that's more doable for me. Okay. Um, cool. Much funner. Cause I can kind of relax and not worry about them all piling up on the weekend, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I hear you. Uh, there were a couple of times when I just finished you know, a few stages for Adria, and then I saw, oh shit, a, a competition that comes up with one event every week, like one weekend every month is happening now, and I've got eight hours to finish it. And so yeah. I have to like, you know, it's like three o'clock and in the morning, and I'm still driving my last stage. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I know how it happens when they all build up, uh, pile up together. So, um Let's see where where was I now? Yeah, so I'm gonna brag a little bit about my team GRF because we won the team competition, and it was you know I think it's because we almost always had four people in the, uh, scoring points in the top fifteen or the top ten, but EXR your team took second and third in the individual. Uh, you took second in the team competition, um, and you were second and third in the individual competition, but um, you and Speed Sensei were probably the only ones who showed up consistently, um, but you know you do so so well. So what's it like being in EXR, Exodus Racing, one of the fastest teams in the world? It's pretty crazy, especially when you put it like that. Um, you know, because when I joined, I was basically just playing in JRC and doing the the um, you know the main the main board races. And uh, so I really had no idea what I was walking into. Um, and I, you know, I basically, I was kind of just like tugging at everybody's sleeves once I joined the, the Discord, like, hey, what do I do? What? Oh, I'm new here. Hi. Hi, guys. You know? Yeah. Um, and then the more that I, uh, more that I check out their Discord and just kind of read their conversations, you know, they've got racers across all different games that are the fastest in the, some of the fastest in the world. Some of them are getting like, you know, actual contracts and stuff like that so it's right. wild to be sort of just this dorky dad out in the middle of nowhere um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know amongst these guys who are at the top of their game um so you know there's a little bit there's definitely a little bit of pride there um not like it, just pride myself like hey, yeah I'm, you know i got i got junky equipment and i you know i don't know anything about this game <laughs> anything about the community or anything about you know i'm not on facebook i don't all of this stuff so kind of just to be tagging along in the back it, it makes me feel I, I like it i definitely enjoy it that's amazing that's really cool um yeah it's good to uh, i guess you you're a little bit different from some of the some of the people there but you know i i know some of your team members like david leonardi uh david racer he's a, he's a good guy you know he's uh, a, an italian guy and we we kind of just clicked in the competition where we were going up against each other but it was really friendly and jovial and um th that's what i really like about uh some of the older guys especially is um it's all in good fun you know we don't we take the racing seriously but not seriously if you know what i mean yeah 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 so that's that's pretty cool okay so um Although, you know, even for our age, yeah. we should know better than this at our age. Um, I remember certainly earlier on, you know, if you if I would like blow a rally or if I'd, if I'd you know, <laughs> I'd make some dumb mistake, like, like le I'd legitimately be upset about it. And I'd be too embarrassed to tell anybody, you know, yeah. I couldn't tell my wife, like, 
<laughs> who crashed a, you know, I crashed a fake car in a, in a competition with no stakes and I'm upset about it, you know, so it's, yeah. but, uh, I've, I've definitely learned to, to ease up a bit on that. It, now I just, it, it doesn't bother me at all. But in the beginning, especially once I realized that like, oh, I'm actually kind of competitive, um, yeah, the effect that a blown rally can have on me is, or could have on me, was was pretty profound and ridiculous, frankly. But um, oh man, I you know, you. I think it's, I think everybody should have understanding um, about how bad you can feel when you blow a rally. Um, as as silly as it seems, it it can really, it can devastate you. Yeah, no, I, I hear you completely. I mean, uh, the worst thing I found was when I was getting really nervous, right? So I would be able to say, for example, this is a, a, a real situation where I was doing custom event practice and I took a Subaru NR4 and just got the fastest time ever on the wet uh, track in Argentina, right? One of the long ones. Mm. And, um, you know, be faster than the Evo and by several seconds and I was really proud of it and then I went immediately to do it in the competition and I ended up like about six seconds slow just because I was so nervous that I wasn't taking the corners correctly like not even cautiously oh, but yeah. you, you know sometimes if yeah exactly because if you go into sometimes some corners at the wrong speed you're going to screw it up like if you're too slow you're going to screw it up yeah. you know let alone too fast yeah. so <laughs> That used to happen to me all the time. I'd get the shakes before a, before a rally. And I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah. like, what am I doing? I'm, I'm 40 years old, and I'm, like, you know, I, I'm fluttery before this. And, you know, I, honestly, before before rallies now, I don't actually practice. I'll just right. do – I'll pick a random stage and make sure that I understand the car and that, I, you know, I've got a good understanding of what the car is going to do. And then – um go into it otherwise because if i practice too much then i'm blowing through i'm blowing through stages as if there are no you know because there's really no consequences and yeah and so i can really push it in practice and then when i get into a real rally there's all these different variables that could come into play that i may not be ready for so i just do one stage i'll maybe practice it a few times just get comfortable with the car and then during the rally i can you know i can i can i can go quick but at the same time i still know that you know, I need to scale back a little bit and be a little careful. And um, so, yeah, I've, I've, in a way, I've, I've mostly stopped practicing in that sense, at least as far as putting together uh, custom competitions and stuff like that. Um, it also, it's a good way to fight nerves. You know, if you just practice once and then be like, you know, I don't know how this is going to turn out. And, you know, if I, if I set the fastest time on all my custom events, if I jump into the real rally, I'm going to have that expectation of myself. And, um, that alone can add to nerves. So I've, I've just been trying to avoid that. Right. So that's a real testament to how good you actually are that you do these things with minimal practice now. Because to be honest, I was always trying to catch up with you. And, you know, I think I beat you on a couple of occasions, but I practiced to death. Like I practiced and practiced and practiced my, practiced my ass off. And at times it got stressful from just doing that. And so season three, I'm going to be taking much more of a laid back approach. And I don't really care if I don't, you know, finish at the top five or anything. So, yeah, it's a good lesson um, that you're, uh, um, well, that you've learned and I'm learning now as well. It's just a game in the end. Um, but it's also a testament, I think, to how good the game is that we can, like grown men can feel uh, so invested in the outcome, you know, that it's almost like a real rally to us. So, oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's, that's well, I mean, pretty to, cool. To get good at this game, you have to, I mean, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that go into <laughs> getting good at this game. You know, you really have to invest your time. You really have to think about what you're doing. And, um, you know, and just after all that time spent just learning how to play the game and get faster, there's, no matter what, there's always going to be a little bit of built up expectation of yourself. So, um, yeah, it is, a, it's a great game. I, it's, uh, it's been the only game that I think I've ever actually invested in equipment for. Yeah. You good know, point. I've never done that with a game before. Yeah. Good so, point. Um, yeah, and it's also like, other than some word games on my phone, it's the only game I play as well. Uh, I don't have time for anything else. 
So yeah, pretty much the same here. So what's uh, what are your favorite cars in Dirt Rally Two? And I know you've said in the past that you don't get modern all wheel drive cars. So what are your favorites, and what do you mean by not getting modern all wheel drive cars? Um, I think my favorite might be the the Renault Five Turbo, just because it's so awful to drive <laughs> that when you do get it going fast, you yeah. know you can get through a stage. But it's it's extremely uh, satisfying, just because it really is. It doesn't even drive like a car. I don't know what it drives like, but it's <laughs> it's terrible. Um, so we, when you can get through a stage and you know keep it up on the boost the whole time, um, it's super satisfying. And then. Of course, the Alpine is just a sweetheart. It's just a sweetheart of a car. It's been one of my favorite cars since I was in my teens, I think, when I first saw Michel Mouton driving one. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, so th I think those are probably my two favorite cars of the game. And as far as uh, not really getting the more modern cars, um, it, what got me into rally, you know, being an oldie, of course, was seeing the the crazy amounts of car control that the, the, um, the rear-wheel drive guys and even the more kind of more basic... Um, Group A uh, cars, mm -hmm. they had to b invent these methods of car car control to get just the cars around the track. I, I can't even say safely, but just keep them pointed <laughs> the right way, essentially. Yeah, well, not and even that know, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you know, just full, you know, using drift to basically use the rear wheels to push you into the 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 apex of the corner and whatnot, and um, that always just seemed very fun and it was always very attractive to me. And uh, the more modern cars. You know they have they're just so incredible they have so much grip they have so much um their suspension is so incredible um that it really comes down to more uh you know breaking points and uh corner entry and exit speed and and in other words more traditional racing techniques and it, less emphasis on those rally specific techniques so um and you know of course it, this game being my own little personal fantasy that I get to play all the time, I want to be in the older cars and, and replicate those crazy, you know, wild sideways drifts and and um, you know the the uh, uh, the um, Scandinavian flicks and all that stuff like that. That really isn't necessary in the more modern cars, and in fact, you actually kind of slows you down. So um, I haven't practiced as much with the the more modern cars as a result of not enjoying them as much. Um, and so I'm not as good with them, and and also it's it's um, it's more of like a tarmac style approach, which is of course you know it, it a skill in its own right. It just it, it isn't that attractive to me. Right, I hear you. Okay, so I I think I'm beginning to get it now. Yeah, the the I I know like certain um, techniques like left foot braking and all that they were specifically invented by rally drivers to uh you know to get that grip and and push the cars through the uh the corners um in a safe kind of way so yeah it makes sense now and yeah you you, you the way you put it really makes me think about um I want to drive some more rear wheel drive cars as well I love the alpine I must say you know it was um probably the first rear wheel drive car that I really enjoyed and then yeah, when you've got the right tuning for it it's just so beautiful I think I've said this publicly that um, I think of all the uh, classic cars that is the one that I would be really happy to own and I would drive it all the time <laughs> if I had it in real too. life yeah. When I was in my 20s, I found a, a, a Dinalpine, I don't know how to pronounce it, Dinalpine, Dinalpine, okay. um, which was the Mexican version. They, they ah, made Dinal it in Mexico for a little while. And I found one in uh, San Diego um, okay. for like $5,000. Oh, wow. And, and of course, me being in my 20s had no money to do anything about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, of course, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course, when I find all these amazing cars, it's it's when I have no money to do anything <laughs> about it. But yeah, that I I re, I look back at that and I'm just like, oh, oh, you know, now they're worth so much. But that is definitely one of the cars that I would love to own as well. Did you ever see the uh, the new one, the new Alpine yes. that they made? Have you ever? I've not had any experience with it at all, but I've heard that it captures the spirit of the old one. I've only seen them in pictures. Apparently, they're not going to release it here, which oh. you know, is, is pretty, pretty, pretty yeah, tough yeah, for the yeah. course. We never get the fun stuff. 
Okay, so similarly to uh, now we've heard a little bit about your ca uh, car preference, what about locations? What what kind of surface and locations do you like in the game? Uh, Argentina is easily my favorite. Um, mm. I like really kind of uh, lower speed technical rallies. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure why. I, I just have a little bit more trouble with the fast flowing ones. Um, and a lot of it also has to do with my the degrees of rotation on my wheel that I have set up, um, which I did not set up on purpose. I don't okay. know why it was set like this, but I'm set to a 200 degrees rotation. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, right. Um, so what does that mean? It means that I can only turn the wheel 200 degrees. It, that's lock to lock. So that's on like 100 degrees each side or 200 degrees each side? 200, uh, 200 degrees total, so 100 degrees each side. Wow, okay. Okay. And it was set up like that. I don't know why, but my G27, either I set it like that at some point in the distant past or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then I started playing dirt and never thought to question it. It was just like, wow, these cars are real twitchy. You know, <laughs> but, um, and it wasn't until later when I joined JRC when, you know, people are like, yeah, I'm running at 540 or I'm running at what? And I'm like, oh, I should probably look at what my degrees of rotation are. I'm like, well, mine are set to 200. And everybody's like, you're, that's ridiculous. What are you doing? Um, so as a result, you know, the, the fast flowing stages are way harder because you have to be so smooth because you sneeze in the, in the you know, you're going off into the weeds. I um, see, I see. So, uh, yeah, I, I, but either way, I, I like the, the more lower speed, more technical courses. I think those are, those are probably the funnest for me. Well, if I check my records, I believe in the Adria Championship, you won Argentina and its antithesis, I suppose, Finland. So you did pretty well I, I, in. <laughs> I only won Finland because Speed Sensei in Nevada, I think, crashed out. I think that was right. Other than Argentina, I think that was my only chance of beating them is if they had some, you know, terrible mishap. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think I came second in one in one of those as well, and it was because they weren't there or they'd had uh, a mishap as yeah. well at some point. And one, I think, one time they both had uh, technical difficulties. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. So, anyway, that that was sad, but. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. it's kind of sad. You know, you gotta, <laughs> but, you know, we got to take what we can against those guys. Yeah, you know, it's sad for them, but it's kind of nice to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, so, okay, so let me um, let me ask you, how do you think you got so fast then? Because, ser seriously, as someone who's been playing it for a little while, but you are certainly one of uh, the fastest in the world. I always see your name up there, and I always kind of tucked to myself thinking oh god this guy again how am I ever going to beat him <clears throat> and you know I know you've got like multiple world records especially in Argentina which you said you've got um, is your favorite uh, location so how do you think you got so fast I don't know I mean I, <laughs> I don't, maybe that you know the summer of 2020 when I started um, and maybe probably a bit of last summer too just I think the sheer hours that I put in mm -hmm. um and also just thinking a lot about it i was i also if you want to get into uh you know really get into the geek out hard on real world drive stuff um there's a youtube channel called vhs rallies yeah and um i just would watch the old school real world drive rallies and look at how they their cars are set up how um how they're applying throttle when they go through it you know just really just try to digest as much as i could about it but okay. uh, beyond that, I I don't know. I don't even remember. It just seems like everybody else got slower. It doesn't feel like I got any faster. <laughs> you know, I wish that I had some some uh, sage advice or something that would be like, oh well, this when I did this, everything changed. No, nothing. Uh, okay. Nothing seemed to stand out as far as getting better. I just sort of did, and uh, I like I said, I really wish I had a. Uh, um, some you know some some Magic sort of hack tips. that could get you there but I, I just a lot of practice a lot of thinking about it and um you know t and talking to people on discord about different setups and and ways to approach corners and things like that but um hmm. okay so you've yeah, got some I, I, peer to honestly, peer help. i think just watching old school rallies really helped help me a lot that's interesting because i think not a lot of people can do that kind of thing it's it's the sort of thing that i would do i think is to 
watch some old stuff and then think about it, think about the theory and then try to put it into practice. But from what I'm hearing, you did also get some tips and stuff from other people on Discord and you, you were just curious and you asked questions and put them into practice. Yeah, pretty much, pretty cool. much, you know, and I, and I do, I do weird stuff that I'm not even sure if the, if the Codemasters engine handles, you know, like <laughs> I, I'll, some, with rear wheel drive cars, I often put the, the rear, uh, uh, suspension height a couple ticks lower mm -hmm. and a lot of that's from watching old rallies where they would have the, the rear end way down not only yeah. to, to tr transfer the weight but also because the fronts are really what soak up the bumps like if you watch Baja uh, you know the Baja 1000 trucks they're set up with the fronts really high too because they're the fronts being the first that really impacts those those bumps right um, oh hello yeah I'm here hello Oh, okay. So uh, we're going to take a little pause to fix this. Uh, uh... Oh, I'm back. I'm oh, back. you're back. Okay. I, think I was getting your call. Yeah. Oh, I Sorry. see. Okay. No worries. We can, so... cut, we can cut that out. Where did I lose you? No, that's okay. You were uh, you were just saying that uh, you've had the rear sus suspension a couple of ticks lower because you were watching Baja rallies, and that's the way. Yeah. 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 And it, I once again, I it's I'm just driving by placebo. Uh, you know, I don't know if it actually makes a difference or not, but I I try to incorporate as many real real, uh, real life things that I see as as I can. Right. Um, well, that's and... that's really interesting because uh, I'm sure it is it is part of the Codemasters uh, algorithms and engines because uh, uh, you know why would they give us the ability to change the heights of the suspension front and rear independently? I'm sure they've got something coded in there, hopefully, but that's really interesting. I'll have to think about that because I've often wondered what the um, um, you know the effect would be, and I've sometimes had them accidentally asymmetrical front and back, and uh, not really you know correlated that with a certain way of handling the car. But that's pretty. Well, cool. I've also found that it helps with like tippy vehicles, vehicles that you know, if you have to have your suspension up fairly high because it's a really rough rally or whatnot. Yeah. By having the the rear a bit lower, mm -hmm. you're kind of tripoding a little bit, as opposed to you know being a box, a real high box with a high center of gravity. By yeah. shifting that center of gravity a little bit, at least in theory, you know what I mean? I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I don't know if this actually translates to the game, but I that's the kind of stuff that I think about when I'm you know setting up a car or I'm approaching a rally. Um, so. That's really cool. I think I'm definitely going to play around with that. So you said that you part of the reason you got so good, you think, is just the sheer amount you played. So how often do you drive Dirt Rally 2 now? And how often at the peak of your playing? Because I know you've cut down a little. Yeah, I've had to. Um, you know, I have two young kids. Um, one's three, one's about uh, six months old. And it just, it's a lot, it's a high workload. It's a high workload age. <laughs> and yeah. Um, um, before my son was born, uh, I was playing like six hours a day wow. because my business was really slow because of COVID. Uh, my daughter was taking huge naps. I just kind of had this dead time during the day. Um, and it was too hot to go outside. It gets incredibly hot around here, and I just hate going outside when it's hot. So um, I was putting in huge amounts of hours, and now I'm playing maybe three hours a week. Um, okay. But, I, but I'm, still, I'm still retaining... Thankfully, I'm still retaining that 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 speed and skill. I would love to practice more, but it just isn't really in the cards. But um, you know, I, I think that that putting in so much time in such a short period of time really kind of just built up my fundamentals well enough to where I can kind of just hop on and practice for you know a couple stages now and then feel pretty comfortable to to get into a rally. Right. I, I think in part that's because the game's getting a bit long in the tooth, and we probably have built up a longer term memory of some of the stages but also certainly our skills do um once you develop them they don't take as much effort to maintain as de as they did to develop i guess right right they atrophy much slower yeah exactly so um and i don't know that you said um um maybe that you know the game isn't doing it as much for you as it was at once uh, is that do you think because we we don't have new stages or uh, you know it's just kind of becoming repetitive do you want to say anything about that you know I think it could be that for sure um, and then uh, also you know I I, ha I have ADD 
I've, I've, I've had ADD my whole life and, and, um, I, as a result, I can hyper-focus really hard on a, on a hobby for a while and I can hyper-focus so long that I start to get a little bit burnt out on it where I, I feel like I need to move on to something else or there's, but I, but I still really enjoy it. I just don't have that insane drive where I'm like, I'm, I'm going to bed thinking of setups or thinking about going through a stage anymore. <laughs> right, um, right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely long in the, t it's kind of a combination of all those things really. Okay. So, um, I, I hear you there as well. Like I just wish, sometimes I wish that they could just convert some of the dirt three dirt two tracks and just make them available to us you know any any right. any new material would be great but we'll, we'll come back to that kind of thing in in, in the, a couple of okay. questions so i know you own a couple of vr rigs right and vr for me was the game changer i think i was just a better than average driver until covid hit and i got my vr setups and um so for me personally i'll never drive a sim again without vr okay. um so right so yeah so that brings me to the question how do you rate the vr experience personally did you ever drive without it and i also know that you prefer the unusual combination as we can see in some of the videos that are playing in the background um that you like the unusual combination of vr and hood cam rather than yeah. a cockpit view so yeah tell us about your vr experience because uh, i'm all about the vr um, I actually bought the Oculus. I bought it used for like a hundred bucks. I, in fact, my entire my entire first uh, VR rig was like the cheapest I could throw together because I just <laughs> wanted to see what it was all about. Yeah. And then I built this like really terrible driving rig that I still use today. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, I think around that time is when I noticed that that uh, Dirt finally had um, VR functionality. I was playing on a screen before that in, okay. in um, you know in car as well. Um, and I, 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 I can't, I, I am not going back to driving anything but VR. Um, there are, there are certainly limitations with it, uh, as far as, uh, depth reception, you know, it's not real depth reception. It's, it's, uh, 3d stereoscopic. So as far as like immersion for me, it doesn't really quite work. I don't really get that sense of immersion. Maybe I'm just, I've had the, the whimsy and wonder beaten out of me by being a game dev, but I don't really get that, that sense of immersion. Right, um, you right. know, which brings me to my next, you know, why I race in hood cam. Um, I drive like a really windy canyon to work every day, and uh, when there's not a lot of traffic, I, I have a little uh, Toyota GT86, uh, okay, and I can kind of uncork it if there's not a lot of traffic. And I was thinking about my peripheral vision as I was driving to work one day, like you do, yeah, and noticed that you know when you're really focusing on the road. Um, it really comes into extreme detail and you're very aware of the limitations, the physical limitations of, of your car, where your hood is, you know, all these different sensory things come in and the interior of your car essentially disappears. It just sort of turns into a black fuzz on your periphery that's more or less just grounding you spatially. And um, I was, you know, as I'm doing that, I'm going, no, oh, just like in dirt when I'm in car. And then I thought, wait a minute, that means I'm burning a third to a half of my extremely limited <laughs> VR pixel budget on something my brain is actively trying to ignore right. and looking out the windscreen nothing is coming into sharper focus because there is no sharper focus then compound that with the fact that there really isn't true depth perception so I started thinking about like okay so it's it's clearly the most realistic point of view but is the information it's giving you the most realistic and I thought no I don't think that I don't think I don't think it is more realistic. If you sat down in a real car and had the same view uh, or a quality of information out out your windscreen, I think you'd be too afraid to drive down the driveway. It would be terrifying and weird, and you <laughs> wouldn't be able to tell where anything was. So, right. I came back home, started playing with all different settings, and, and figured out that I could I could uh, drive from hood cam. And um, to me, that gives me the most, as far as the extremely limited information the game can give you, just because of its very nature. Um, to me, that's the most realistic information in the game. So I know I know exactly where the boundaries of my hood are, and I have the clearest view of the road. Um, mm, that's so... really that's really cool. I mean, um, in the previous career, I was uh, a neuroscientist, and yeah, you're right. You know, if we've got the um, in car view, yeah, we tend to block out the stuff that's 
not so important and so you're the phrase that you use that you're blowing one third of your vr pixels on stuff that your brain is actively trying to cancel out that's uh pretty profound that's a, a very cool way of uh thinking about it um but it, you know it also depends on it but i don't want to be the you know the gatekeeper for for realism there because for sure, yeah. if, if if you can if, if the information you get from being in car um you know, helps you drive or gives you the information that you need to go fast, and that, that I'm all for it. It's almost like, you know, whatever the most, I think, whatever the, whatever gives you the information you need is the most really realistic view. I think I heard somewhere, and I don't know if this is true, that like Tommy Mackinnon drives in chase cam. Yes. Because it gives him the okay. most information that he needs to know to be fast, you know? So right, right. Um, yeah, so I, I know that yeah. Petter Solberg does oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes because he uh he said he wanted to know what the rear of the car was doing and yeah, so yeah. everyone's really frustrated by this you know say we'll try vr or a motion you know simulation rig and um you know you of all people should be inside the car <laughs> but i i do believe yeah you do what's right for you and and that's fine yeah. you know, as far as i'm it concerned it comes down to the quality of information that you need the, the type of information because no matter what you know just with once again the lack of true depth perception the limited um the polygon you know the, the limited polygonal count the the limited detail you really have to find whatever gives you personally the most information you need to go fast so i don't care who i'm actually in a club that's cockpit only okay and um you know i can i can do it just fine it, it's harder but it's not i don't feel like it's harder because it's more realistic i think it's harder right. because i can't i don't have the hmm. the information that i would have in real life um yeah okay it, that's that's pretty cool I, I i i hear you on that um one i mean personally i do find it very immersive being in vr um and i do think the depth perception is for me very realistic and and one of the ways you can show this to yourself is um when your car's on the start line and you're in vr you can actually get up out of the car and walk oh, i know to, i've done that before yeah and walk to the front and walk down the track a little bit if you've got the space in your in your room and um you know and so you know you can see that it's actually a real 3d model that they're using right and of course half the back half of the car is missing because you never get to see that from the cockpit uh, right. yeah so uh, yeah i'm i'm also a really big vr fan and which is why it's very frustrating that games like wrc 10 don't have it and so i will never play them and i'm missing out on a lot of new stages and stuff but um, yeah, huge my rigs, oversight on their part. Yeah, my rig's just not even set up to have a screen anyway. So, okay, so let's see. Talking about rigs and gear, um, I recall that you once tried some stuff that you didn't like too much, and then you just gave it away. Uh, I, I'm fuzzy on the details. Can you tell me that story again, please, and share with the listeners? Yeah, I, uh, I, I think I put most of my time in learning how to play on a on a really clapped out. Um, can't remember if it was a thrift store or a Craigslist by uh, G27. Okay. Um, super clapped out. So I actually dumped my my uh, work rig. Um, and if you've ever driven one of those, you know, the crappier <laughs> Logitech um, wheels, they basically communicate through clicks and clacks. Like that's how you learn yeah. what's going on. The thing just it just sounds like it's breaking all the time. Um, Let me just stop you there I for a second. Language really well. So let me just stop um, you for there for a second, uh, Ian, because yeah. that's exactly what I use and I've always used. I've got a ten-year-old G twenty-seven. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, so, yeah go, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it, it communicates through the like weird clicks and clacks, and and it, it, it's it's strange, but after a while, you learn the language and it really makes sense to you. Um, <laughs> so when I was starting to get faster, I was like, okay, well, you know what? I'm I was gonna go to a, um, a Fanatec rig, but I was like, ah. Uh, I'll, you know what I'll do is I'll step up to a um, a belt driven one first. So I bought a, I bought one of the nicer uh, Thrustmasters, and immediately hated it. It just wasn't speaking the same language. I it didn't. It just absolutely did not do it for me. I could not understand what was going on. It felt rubbery and um, delayed, and it, you know it just felt completely different to this thing that I had learned on. Right. Um, 
and uh, so I just switched back to the G27, and the, the Thrustmaster sat around for a bit, and uh, eventually got to a point where it was talking on JRC with a lot of kids from just around the world and, and whatnot who maybe didn't have the money to, to blow on a, on a wheel or couldn't afford a wheel or, or, you know, were really into it, but couldn't, for whatever reason, you know, doesn't matter. I didn't ask, uh, couldn't, couldn't get a wheel together. So, um, uh, I basically found a, a kid down in, uh, in Southern California, which was, unfortunately, I, I, I wanted to ship it to a, a guy out in Portugal, but the shipping was just insane. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so I found a guy down in Southern California, uh, just someone who couldn't afford a wheel. And I didn't want to go through the whole hassle of trying to, I hate selling things. I don't care. It, you know what I mean? It, ultimately, it's just, now it's something that's taking up space in my, in my, in my room. And I never know what to ask for used things anyway. And it would be, if I was a kid who couldn't afford to buy a wheel, which was basically me like 10 years ago as like a 30 year old man. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it'd be cool to, to get a, a free wheel set up from somebody so I could play this game that we have this whole community with. So I, I just shipped it off for free. Just gave it to, give it to um, um, a kid down in uh, Southern California and hopefully that's he's enjoying awesome. it. That's awesome. That is really, that's a really cool story. I, I do kind of similar things with, uh, you know, I build high-end audio computers, uh, yeah. Betis, betisaudio.com. <laughs> and, um, you know, so for audiophiles who who are usually very wealthy and they have, uh, you know, listening gear for their music rooms for, you know, up to a million dollars, right? Usually 100,000 <laughs> to a million dollars on their speakers, amplifiers, my, my stuff that I build for them as well. And you know a lot of them love the service and the products, and so they'll they'll upgrade after a little while. And the sound circuitry that we have in these systems is is amazing, but you know a six year old computer is still six year old hardware, right? And nobody really wants a you know a third generation Intel processor these days. So when they trade in their stuff for a newer model, I've got all this hardware sitting around and. And, you know, sometimes friends of mine want to uh, or, or people will say, you know, on forums, I'm looking for some cheap hardware to teach my kid how to build a computer for gaming and stuff. Uh, um, I'll do the same kind of thing. And I think uh, uh, when I was their age or in their position, I would have really loved that kind of thing as well. So it's very cool that you do that or that you. Yeah, yeah. it feels so, it feels good to kind of pay back your or you know or kind of uh kind of do the things that you wish would have happened to you when you were struggling or you know yeah couldn't afford something. So absolutely. it feels good to be able to do that yeah i do that with parenting as well <laughs> sometimes <Yeah. laughs> which doesn't always work out but you know I, I, yeah so but the thing is um it also feels great when you get rid of something that's just been taking up space and mental real estate exactly yeah I get to I get to give something away and feel good about it. Yeah, I got to do that. Get some junk and feel yeah, it's it's a win win. Fantastic. So okay, let's let's get back into the the driving thing here as we we come to a close. Um, who do you think's the fastest driver in the world right now overall? Honestly, I don't know. I don't I don't uh, even have the mental bandwidth to follow uh, that. I I uh, there's a kid on uh, on on our team uh, uh uh exr sven who's really really fast yeah but i don't know where he's at um honestly nevada's sort of been like the white whale for me okay. and i think we all <laughs> we all know that he's incredibly fast yeah yeah um, there's yeah, a bunch of them. I, I don't i don't have enough information to to know who's the fastest um other than just who always beat me and right <laughs> nevada's definitely one of them Cool. Yeah, Nevada was uh, stellar in that competition. It yeah, was, sure. uh, you know, when I came close, I would be like, yeah, I was only three seconds behind Nevada. <laughs> you know, um, it was something to brag about. And Speed Sensei as well. And even you, you know, I think in a couple of times I'd um, I'd be telling my team, you know, oh, yeah, and I'm going to try and beat Wookie this time. And you know, we're so <laughs> close and, and so on. So, yeah, that's how we refer to you, Ian. We called you Wookie. Not Wookie? even, okay. not even Mister Wookie. It was just Wookie. Oh, so disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So I've already asked you what tips you'd give 
um, drivers who are wanting to improve but I think uh, you know it's asking around practicing a lot um, looking at what was the uh, VHS was it VHS rallies did you say VHS rallies yeah watch so, a lot of them just you know really study old rally racing and um, you know especially interviews with with rally racers uh, I remember learning about left foot braking in group B cars by mm -hmm. watching an interview with uh, Walter Roll yeah. talking about how uh, left foot brake was the only way he'd get that Audi to turn right right you so, know, so I was like oh okay well I'll give that a shot and see how that works and it, it, it works really well yeah, exactly. That's what I um, I think. I we watched the same interview there. Um, so now I do left. I use left foot braking the whole time when I drive my real car as well. Um, oh. I can't. I, I've forgotten how to right foot brake. <laughs> I think it wasn't fun the very first time I tried it, but yeah, now it was a little sudden. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, but that's what I, I do now. So, um, so what we'll do in in the uh, YouTube version of this uh, interview I'll put the uh, VHS rallies um, YouTube channel in uh, a link in the comment in the um, description down oh, cool. below um, so the final question I have for you is what would you like to see in the next great rally game from Codemasters and you can be as brutal as you like I'm going to be asking everyone I interview this and hopefully we can get some feedback to them uh, certainly do not try to make it appeal to American audiences. <laughs> I hate that. I hate it when you take something like that and, you know, you take a very European, um, no-nonsense uh, kind of sport and throw it in, like, you know, energy drinks and dude bros and, and uh, you know, kicking rad new metal music and just oh, all that stuff that just ruins everything. Um, you know, certainly more locations... And maybe some some more. Uh, I would love to see like some grassroots style. <clears throat> excuse me. Some uh, some more like grassroots um, lower classes. For instance, you know, and I'm biased because I have a little GT86. Like I know that those make pretty good rally cars. I'd like to see some, um, you know, not not necessarily just historics and whatnot, but there's a lot of people racing now that are using the cars they have. Mm -hmm. You know, I see. Uh, uh, 350Zs getting rallied or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but also I understand that licensing is a pain and Toyota is especially hard yes, to deal with. So yeah. I understand why that's, um, that may not be on the table. Um, and, you know, I don't know what engine they're using for their new game. Hopefully EA won't screw everything up, but, um, but some longer rallies, of course. I understand now that I guess the, the, the longest rally in Dirt 2 is a result of you know, some limitation with their engine and oh, um, nowadays in 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 um you know in an age when we can have open world games uh the sizes that they are there's there's no excuse to have um uh such short rallies um right. you know i like the start i like i like i'm okay with the the length of stages are now but it would be great to have some much longer ones um so we'll see what kind of limitations their engine has um you know, maybe some more granular uh, 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 tuning options. And, you know, beyond that, I don't I don't really have a lot of complaints. I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, d number one, uh, little marker flags on the side of the road <laughs> uh, won't actually stop a car if you hit them. I don't know if they knew this. Right. Um, you know, I don't know where they got their physics models. Bushes or even blades of grass typically don't. Your car doesn't wrap around them when you hit them. It won't flip a car like it's a like it's a um, transformer stop. You know. Yeah. It, it, that is probably one of my biggest gripes about the game is as uh, how little marker flags can completely destroy a car. <laughs> right. So, right. Right. You know. Yeah. But that's really. I don't have a lot of major gripes about the game. I enjoy the hell out of it. So, um, honestly they could release the same game with twice as many um, locations, twice as many cars, I'd, I'd be more than happy. I'd be uh, cool. Yes. You know, I, don't, <laughs> uh, I have to kind of uh, turn down my graphics anyway just um, to keep my... I, I, I have a Valve Index right now, and I run a 3080, but, you know, I want to keep the frame rate up, so I don't, I don't really even care about graphics at all. Right, um, right. 
yeah i hear you on the on the new stages that would be the new locations that would be great and also the bushes and and grass and signs like in uh in scotland for example i know what species of shrubbery is going to be just fine to go over and which ones are made of neutrons and i just kind yeah. of just going to you know stop the car dead and damage the radiator so yeah, yeah. that a, p a pine sapling shouldn't stop like a, a 2000 year old car or a 2000 year old 2000 pound car you know yeah so yeah that that's those are the kind of gripes i have but beyond that i you know i'm 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 overall very happy with the game i'm i'm very glad they released it and kept up with it so okay well Ian, thank you so much. This has been a really good chat uh, with you. Hopefully, um, people listening will enjoy it as much as I did. Um, so thanks very much. Is there anything you want to plug? I think this is what people do in podcasts. They ask their guests if there's anything they want to plug. So is there anything you want to shout out, anyone you want to shout out to or plug your business? Uh, uh, I would like to plug a club okay <laughs> um uh, expert historic um it's a cockpit view only um uh historic club so it's a real drive only as well but just a great group of guys and is run uh run by a, a guy that i really like um just really cool dude and who's the that's, guy that's probably about it you want to give a shout out to the guy who runs it Yep, Mexico. Mex his name's Mexico. Sorry, I have something in my throat right now, so I'm not sure. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. But no yeah, worries. Mexico runs uh, Expert Historic. It's just a great club. And um, if you're into historics and cockpit, you only should join it. Right. So, Ian, after we finish the broadcast, you can send me uh, maybe a couple of links to the VHS Rallies channel and the club. And I'll put them in the description, assuming that they're looking for new people to, to join. They always are. And, okay, uh, excellent. Yeah, will do. All right. Okay, well, Joe. thanks very much, Ian. So that <laughs> was uh, that you. You've been the second of hopefully many interviews, Ian, um, that I'll be doing with some of the top drivers and most interesting event organizers in the world of Dirt Rally too. So to anyone listening, if you want to participate or nominate someone to be interviewed in the weeks and months to come, let me know in the comments and uh, maybe we can make that work. So for now. Um, I'm going to sign out, sign off. So thanks again, Ian. Yeah, thank you.